Glenwood and Lunt, we are in the heart of Rogers Park, and once again, we're up here on the stage at the Heartland Cafe. Uh, Michael James, I'm here with... I'm Katie Hogan. That's Katie Hogan, and we are your host for this morning's edition of the Live from the Heartland show. And it is the 11th of February in the year 2012. And can I just say, winter... Yeah, winter finally came, and we're glad because uh, otherwise farmers would suffer, the environment would suffer. We need to have a little bit of cold, and we've got it. It's a little but bit of cold. It's, it's beautiful outside. Yeah, actually. I know. I walked over here with hardly anything on. You're known for that, Michael. But, but I didn't wear shorts. Yeah, that's good. No, it's, it's really, uh, don't be afraid out there, folks. It's, it's, uh, you can handle it. Just uh, put on your normal winter layers, and you'll be just fine. Uh, we're going to have a really nice show today. We're going to start off with um, uh, Tuet Lee. Uh, she's the executive director of the Asian American Institute and Catherine Rivera of Uniting American AmeriCorps. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the work that they do. Uh, and then we're going to have Ann Sheets come up. And she is, Ann is a volunteer for the Illinois Single Payer Coalition and Physicians for a National Health Program. And we're going to actually talk about um, single payer health care. And along with Ann, we have a couple of members, active members of the uh, Unite Here Union. And they're going to talk about their activities, trying to get a little justice from the Hyatt uh, Hotel. And uh, we will, uh, who, who knows who else we'll bring up? Well, yeah, That might true. be enough. That, that might well be enough. We have a couple of announcements we'll fit in along the way, but right now we want to welcome Catherine and Tuet to our funky little corner of the world. Thank welcome. you for having us. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, I saw to, uh, excuse me, I saw Catherine and a, a friend of hers, Viveka, uh, they came in and they asked if about they were going to wanted to do an event at the Heartland, and they are having an event here tonight, which you could tell us a little bit about. But Later. they also had uh, wanted to put up a, an art exhibit, and uh, we did, we have changed the art in the Heartland. We have two really nice exhibits. We have the Asian American Institute uh, show, which you'll be able to tell us a little bit about. And then we also have a long-time employee, Rutio Mendoza. And he has some digitally enhanced photos, some really beautiful uh, pictures of homeless people. And uh, so we got brand new art on the walls, and we hope you'll all rush over here to take a good look. So good morning to the two of you. Catherine, um, let's, no, I'm starting with Tuet, yeah. aren't I? Sorry, I'm, I'm starting with Tuet Lee, Lee uh, the director of the Asian American Institute. Can you tell us, first of all, about the Asian American Institute, what, uh, how long it's been, when, you know, what issues you cover? The whole scoop. Sure, I'd be happy to. Well, this year is very exciting for us for a lot of different reasons. Um, it's our 20th anniversary, and uh, we are a policy and advocacy organization um, concentrating on the Asian American community, the pan-Asian community, meaning that we work with um, a lot of different ethnic groups, um, Chinese, Filipino, Asian Indians, Pakistani, um, you know, so uh, the uh, a wide um, breadth of the ethnic communities that uh, exist here in Illinois, and there's quite a few. Um, we work on a variety of civil rights issues, um, as well as civic participation. So um, issues like the census, we um, led a 20 uh, organization uh, collaboration um, to get out the uh, to get people to fill out the census forms, and so we actually increased. Um, that participation in every neighborhood that we worked in. And so from that, we see like actually that Asian Americans are the fastest growing group in um, Illinois, um, increasing by 41%. And so there's um, about 670,000 Asian Americans in Illinois now. Every time I'm going to ask you something, you go right into it. I started <laughs> thinking about the different uh, representatives of the Asian community here in Chicago, and you you gave us a list of folks, and then I was going to say, well, how many Asian Americans are there in Illinois? And then you came up with a 670,000 figure. How about Chicago, and, uh, and where in Chicago do uh, various representatives of, of Asia live? 
I know we do have a um, our first Asian American alderman. Right. And uh, that he's been on the radio show. Yeah. And uh, he's one of the progressive guys downtown. So uh, what what neighborhoods basically uh, do people find the people from uh, Asia? Um, yes, actually, uh, there's about 160 or 170 thousand Asian Americans in the city, and. Um, you know, despite the city's loss, population loss of about 7%, Asian Americans grew by 17% in the city. Um, so, you know, people are still coming here. You'll see them where um, you think of where you might find Asian Americans, where the businesses are, um, Devon uh, uh, area, Chinatown, um, but, uh, you know, Albany Park and Uptown. Uh, Uptown is where our office is on Lawrence and Broadway. But you're also seeing an increase, um, you know, in the downtown areas. When we look at the wards, um, because we worked on redistricting quite a bit, um, the 42nd ward, uh, uh, Brendan Riley's ward, has quite a few Asian Americans there as well. And then going west on Lawrence, you have a lot of Korean right. and, activity out that yeah. way. Yeah. Well, what's interesting about the Albany Park area is that there are a lot of Korean um, businesses, but actually the Asian American population there is very diverse, um, and actually less Korean Americans and um, many Filipinos um, and uh, Southeast Asians, so Vietnamese uh, uh, population there. When I was uh, when I would talk about Chicago as the center of the universe and. Uh, it is, right? It is. Yeah. And it has larger concentrations of more diverse racial and ethnic and religious groups perhaps than anywhere else in the country. I would go and more Greeks than anywhere outside of Athens, more Poles than anywhere outside of, of uh, Warsaw. Warsaw, and uh, more Filipinos anywhere outside of Manila. I think I may have just added that, but where, where would... <laughs> he did just add Where that. does the largest concentration of Filipinos live in the United States? Do you know that? Did anyone know that? I believe it's California. Sure. Uh, in the Bay Area. The Makes Bay Area. sense. Makes sense. A the Asian community diaspora, if mm -hmm. you will. I mean, you have an unfair advantage. When Michael says, you know, like, how are things in Asia? It's huge. It's, uh, I just how saw many? a documentary on Bhutan. Yeah. yeah. We had a Bhutanese guy working here uh, just this year. Mm -hmm. And I was very impressed because I've been to Nepal and I know Bhutan is a very closed society uh, for many years. But... Um, do you have, when you come over here, um, I've always been struck living in Rogers Park by the proximity of Indian and Pakistani living side by side and shopping and working together on Devon Avenue, right. whereas the reality on the other side of the world, at home, it's pretty tricky. Right. Do people bring the, um, the clashes that exist in their home country to the communities here? I, I know it's an entirely different thing when you're an immigrant and you come ashore, everybody clings together a little more. I think that, um, you know, when people come to the United States, that is, there's a lot of reasons why, and they, um, you know, value what uh, the United States has to offer. And so I'm not saying they give up everything about their home country or those types of um, uh, ideas about how they feel about other um, communities, but I think the whole idea that Devon exists as um, a business community and that people w um, literally work side by side, yes. um, it, there is, uh, I think, an uh, underlying, um, you know, value that people um, see, right, in, in working together. And so uh, I do see that people, you know, identify with their ethnic communities first and foremost in many ways, but they also... Um, start to adopt an Asian American identity or a South Asian uh, identity where, especially here in the Midwest where our community is still pretty small, mm -hmm. relatively, that they understand that in, you know, there's a numbers game and so when we unite as Asian Americans, we can make a greater impact. Huge. Yeah, Huge. absolutely. Well, I would assume there's still a good amount of discrimination uh, against some Asian groups. Uh, some, some of it may be jealousy. Some of it may be discrimination. You had uh, mentioned earlier that uh, you grew up in Milwaukee. Yes. And um, I remember that there were some uh, issues further north there around fishing with some a Asian Americans uh, or people who had come. Uh, and uh, there was some hunting. In Milwaukee? No, hunting. north of there. Hunting, maybe. Maybe it was hunting yeah. or... Yeah, yeah, northern Wisconsin. The yeah. fishing yeah. thing was in Texas yes. with Vietnamese Americans. Yes, yes. Yeah. 
in, in, Milwaukee, in uh, Wisconsin with Native Americans. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, um, even here in um, Illinois, we also are very vigilant about hate crimes against um, Asian Americans. Um, you know, we uh, also look at um, discrimination in um, public accommodation. So we worked on, I mean, we have worked on hate crime cases quite a bit. Um, there was the fisherman who was pushed into Montrose Harbor by right. a skinhead. We did a lot of work around that, just raising awareness around that. Um, there was a, a Filipino American nurse who went to an H&M store and had uh, an employee, you know, kind of say ching chong around after her. Um, you know, and so these are, I mean, yeah, they, I think the a lot of times people think about Asian Americans as not facing discrimination or being wealthy or being well educated, but I th there are, you know, obviously a diversity in our community and I think people were really surprised at the last census that Korean Americans were, had the highest percentage of poverty in um, Chicago of any racial or ethnic group. That is very notable. Yeah, uh -huh. and um, so there are a lot of things that uh, people don't think about because they're not looking deeper into um, the statistics that um, we do, right? So that's why the census is very important to us and then bringing out those demographics because we do analyze analyze those demographics and put them out as well. The, um, the census is an interesting situation because it sounds to me like you and the Asian community, the pan-Asian community, had great success uh, with getting your community onto the census, whereas the Latin American and uh, Hispanic community did not, um, which I'm sure is a result of uh, the folks coming after uh, undocumented people and no one believes when they talk to a government representative on their front steps that they're, they're not going to be in trouble. Um, for you, uh, Tiet, you're uh, Vietnamese, I'm presuming? Yes, I am. And are you second generation, first generation? Uh, well, I was born in Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you are first, you are, you are Vietnamese American. Yeah. Um, do you have children? No, I don't. Okay. Sorry, that's, uh, now I'm going to say something completely different. What does the tw now 20-year-old 20 Asian American Institute do in its work in Uptown and beyond? Yeah, so we, um, our office is in Uptown, but we really work metropolitan-wide, mm -hmm. and uh, we work on a variety of different issues, um, you know, around uh, political empowerment for Asian Americans. And what we find is that there's a lot of need for um, education about our community and actually to our community. Um, we really encourage uh, civic participation, so whether it's census or registering um, and actually going out to vote yeah. is a very important part of that. Uh, and but what we find is that we also need to do a lot of leadership development. Um, you know, 70% of our community is um, foreign born, right? They're immigrants. But what's interesting is 70% of our community is also either um, native born or have become citizens, right? So as much as we um, come as immigrants, we are also equally Americans. Sure. Chia, let me ask you. <clears throat> Katie mentioned uh, undocumented workers in the yeah. Latino community. Yeah. Uh, how big an issue is that in the uh, in the Pan Asian community? Because sure. I'd heard all these stories over the years. I actually at a, at the Korean bathhouse, the Paradise, you'd hear stories about Michael uh, hangs there. Well, once a lot in a of people while. do. Yeah. Um, but uh, I've, I've heard people talking about uh, kind of indentured servant slave situations of people working on Devon Avenue and living in basements and uh, just how much of uh, the Pan-Asian community is, is undocumented, how big an issue, is, a scare issue is it for people? What goes on around that? Yeah, it is a very important issue in our community that um, a lot of people inside the community don't want to even talk about. But nationally, um, you know, a few years ago when the Pew Research Center put out numbers, they estimated about 13, uh, uh, you know, 13 million um, undocumented total, but one million of them were Asian American. Um, this is nationwide. I, I don't have an estimate for Illinois or Chicago, but we know and we work with organizations that um, work with undocumented Asian Americans. And, and we know, I mean, this has come up um, and it actually affects a lot of different communities. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but people don't want to um, talk about it necessarily, but 
you know, over the years, uh, more recently, people have um, have been starting to talk about it and trying to address the the issue as well. Um, to yet, I wanted to know if there's a perceived advantage that Asian and becoming Asian Americans have over, say, Latin Americans, Mexicans, because of the presumptions of illegality that hangs over the Latino community's head. Do you perceive that? Or do you get any of that? I and don't... Catherine, you might want to speak to that when, when you ever get on the microphone here. She's getting ready. Yeah, I know. Uh, I mean, I think that uh, actually in some ways it's a disservice to us to um, always assume that Asian Americans are, are well off, right? And so the right. service organizations that we work with are constantly underfunded. You know, um, I was talking to someone and they were saying they were, um, the city is cutting everybody 10% across the board and they're like, okay, I see how that's fair. And then I thought, wait, we grew by 17%. Why are we getting cut? You know, and so it, it's always like, well, you're small, and you know, and I think the other part is that Asian Americans, um, people don't think that we'll complain, right? And so, and, uh, our organization is kind of like the bad cop <laughs> for the community. Congratulations! Right? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm very proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, because I think it's, uh, and you know, I'm happy to have all the service organizations who do this great work um, in our communities be the good cop and benefit from you know the the funding that's necessary. Right. Um, but I think in terms of uh, hiring and those types of things, I'm, I, I don't know, um, you know, specifically whether there are advantages, because I think that the undocumented in our communities are also in these sort of underground um, economies, right? And I think they're similarly abused, so I, I don't think that there is. I probably didn't phrase it correctly, but I think my question was resting more on the continuing ignorance on the part of Native uh, white people in America on the differences between the various peoples that they mm -hmm. sit on the L with and cross, you know, cross paths with doing life here in Chicago and that assumptions they would make based on kind of general ignorance, you know, which is supported by most of the media that yeah. does not, you know, really uncover who we are amidst yeah. and what are they up to. So let's, let's invite Catherine Rivera into the conversation. Who's uh, who's you're with AmeriCorps? Yes. And and but you're doing your work with Uniting America. Uniting America. Yeah. Actually, the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights. ICIRR. ICIRR. They got a grant last year to start this program, Uniting America, which um, the big goal is to connect native-born residents of Illinois and the immigrants and refugees that live in the same areas and um, wow, they're doing that. I didn't even that. know I was doing such a good segue there. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> really? Woo! I, um, um, so that job. Yeah, to connect those two groups that live in the very same areas um, through volunteering. So they've hired about 18 of us, stationed us in city and suburbs and the north side is, is my area and the Asian American Institute has been gracious enough to host me. Um, so I've been working on getting volunteers um, to teach ESL, to tutor kids after school, and to assist with citizenship. How's it going? Actually, really great. It's going really well. And, um, I mean, the vision behind this is that the only way that you would stand up for immigrants and refugees is, is if you know one. So, and if you, like you said, do life with that always, person. Always, always so. true. Yeah. Smashing the ignorance by face to face yes. and knowledge of one another. Catherine, you have what seems to me to be a Latino last name. Does that belong to a guy you know or something? No. <laughs> Who conquered the Philippines? Oh, it's the Filipino name. Yeah, I'm second generation Filipino American. My yeah. sister in law, my niece in law is also second generation Filipino. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I is that she was eating here today? She's here a lot. She's not here with her beautiful son, but um, what I just exhibited is part of the ignorance that a lot of people have about Filipinos. They hear um, Tagalog and it sounds like Spanish. Right. Yeah. Um, so in your work of finding volunteers, where do you find the most volunteers? Where is that, where is that highway of folks coming and saying, yeah, I want to mentor a student. Yeah, I want to volunteer. Um, I mean, I don't think it's a surprise that most of my volunteers are students. 
um, second generation Asian American students. Uh -huh. I think because, you know, being the sons and daughters of immigrants, they can identify with this, um, with the immigrant experience. Sure. Um, but I've also been getting a lot of volunteers from the Jewish community, actually, in Skokie. And just, I mean, working professionals and retirees. Do you have, do you have like a limit? I know that um, uh, AmeriCorps is one of those programs that has a limit to your time. Right. Is it a year or two years? It's or? a year with a potential for two. Okay. Yeah. Where are you at in that? I just started about oh, good. three months ago. And, and, are you uh, from Chicago? I'm born and raised on the north side, yeah. Okay. Uh, is the high school. North side prep. North side prep. Yeah. <laughs> is, is the Rizal Center still um, uh -huh. active in the Filipino community? It is. Um, I haven't been there in some time, but I know it's still a hub for, for See, the community. What I, I, was, I was able to learn what a lot of Americans don't, which is um, how to recognize from names and also some other characteristics, the difference between Japanese, Thai, uh, Chinese, and even Filipino by teaching English as a second language a long, long time, time ago, ago in the 70s. And then we had the phenomenon of electing Harold Washington. And Harold Washington's campaign made it a point to have an Asian Americans for Washington group. And Magala, uh, Magala from the Rizal Center, Magala Lee was a, a very active leader in your community back then in the 80s. And she further introduced it. And, and uh, Ping Tom in the China... Uh, the Chinatown community for whom there is a park named, yes. right? Yes. Was an incredible, powerful, uh, inspirational leader of his community. And I was always very grateful to Harold Washington for introducing Chicagoans to each other and breaking down barriers like that. And uh, how are you both here in... Are you